It is Africa's responsibility to better manage our resources. As we speak, many young Africans are putting their lives in danger to go find better opportunities abroad. Africa is our common home, and we must ensure that every African, every Af African has a future in this continent. One love, go Africa. Hello everyone, I have brought you remarks by President of Rwanda, President Paul Kagame, at the Continental Forum on Education and Youth Employability. So here is the full remarks by President of Rwanda, President Kagame. So welcome to watch and listen what Kagame. Muhammad Aldo Gazwani, President of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania and Chair of the African Union. Excellencies, heads of state and the government, President Abdul Majid Tebun of the People's Republic, Democratic Republic of Algeria, President Basiru de Maifai of the Republic of Senegal, Excellency Musafaki, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Deputy Director uh, Ted Shaiban, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to begin by thanking President Mohamed Aoud Gazwani for organizing this meeting and for the warm welcome and hospitality in Nwakshot, it's good to be back. Mr. President, I also take this opportunity to commend you for your leadership as chairperson of the African Union. In just a decade, from now, young Africans will represent the biggest share of the global population entering the workforce. We cannot let this opportunity go to waste. This generation has the potential of becoming a powerful engine for growth and prosperity not just for Africa, but for the rest of the world. What we need to do is equip these young people with the skills and expertise to meet the demands of the labor market. The partnership with UNICEF for digital skills and connectivity is a good model. In the coming years, science and technology will offer even more opportunities for innovation and we need to prepare our youth for this. The bottom line is that we must invest in building stronger education systems. The economic impact of giving every child the right to learn should not be underestimated. Studies show that for one additional year in a school, earnings can increase by 10%. There is no exaggeration in saying that education can transform lives. One of the biggest challenges Africa faces today 
is the shortfall in the global education funding. I want to propose two solutions to close this gap. For one, it is Africa's responsibility to better manage our resources, relying on external support alone is not a realistic strategy. Effective partnerships should not be confused with outsourcing responsibility or leadership. It is not a question about being big or small or having sufficient resources. It is about making the right choices. This is well within Africa's means. When you take ownership, this becomes even more attractive to those that we want to invest in and with us. In Rwanda, we have increased the share of education spending in our budget from 11% in the year 2020 to 17% in the year 2024. How we spend also matters. The focus should be on quality if we want to see long-term results. This means training and hiring better qualified teachers, modernizing the curriculum and encouraging critical thinking rather than rote memorization. Second, multilateral institutions should harmonize their efforts with the national governments and increase the available funding. It is in this that there is everyone's interest to boost our continent's productivity. More and more countries are also now calling for the reform of the global financial architecture. This is only fair. What developing countries need in order to meet our development goals is more fiscal space, not more debt. To close, I ask that we look at the bigger picture. As we speak, many young Africans are putting their lives in danger to go find better opportunities abroad. This is a sign that we need to do more to empower our youth. This is a sign that there is more to do and that there is more we can do. Africa is our common home and we must ensure that every African, every Af African has a future in this continent. I thank you for your kind attention. Wow, those are just uh, remarks from President of Rwanda, President Paul Kagame, concerning about uh, the issue of uh, continental education and youth employability. So what can we do as uh, the people of Africa to improve our education systems, to improve our curriculums, and also to support the youth employability. As you heard from President Paul Kagame, uh, he's spoken many things, the issue of 
uh, changing our education system. Of course, uh, our education system are uh, preparing many of us, especially young people and Africans, to become job seekers. Uh, this education system that we have, uh, we, her we inherited it from colonial rulers and uh, it was designed to make sure that Africans are becoming job seekers, not creators. So that's why you see we are, our education are based on uh, memorization, not on creativity. So uh, also, Kagame has spoken the issue of responsibilities. Uh, this should be the, the, the responsibilities of Africans. All Africans, the whole continent must be responsible to improve our education system uh, or education systems. But how can we uh, improve uh, our education systems? Yes, we have resources. Have we uh, designed curriculums and systems to teach our young men and women, to teach our students, our people about our resources? You know, one thing that I wonder uh, in the continent of Africa, you find that Africans, despite having all these resources, Africans, we are not, uh, our education are not based on adding value to our natural resources. And that's why you see uh, many of our resources are being uh, taken out as low material or into low forms. So I think we need to improve our curriculums, our education systems to be based on uh, adding value, value addition. And if we can do so, I hope uh, we can uh, increase employment, we can create jobs. And of course, Kagame has uh, spoken very well concerned about how our young men and women are in danger when they are trying to find keen pasture or to find a uh, job abroad. So I think, uh, my dear Kings, when the time has come for we Africans to come together to find the solutions of our challenges. The problem that we have, my dear Kings and Queens, always I'm here to say this problem. Africans, we are not working together. We have great ideas. We are good people in this continent. They have great ideas, but we are not working together. So that is the main problem that we have. And that's why I have been suggesting uh, we need Africa Diaspora Summit where Africans uh, and uh, Africans in the continent and some who are in the diaspora uh, will come together and find solution. If it is about education systems, how we are going to improve our education systems, how we are going to design our new curriculums, how we are going to uh, to modernize our, our our curriculums. I think it is a good idea for Africans to find our own solution. The problem that we are waiting the Europeans to tell us what to do, the Americans and others to tell us what to do, how to improve our education. We are waiting someone to fund us. Many of our projects are being funded by angels from Europe, from America, from Asia. So it means we are working for them. Those who are funding us, we are working for them. So we are not working for us. Uh, I think the time has come, as I said, uh, for Africans to come together. Africa is our home and all of us we must work for our home. We must improve our home. We cannot uh, lament, sit down and cry like little babies that uh, our education is not good or uh, we don't have fund. So who will give us fund? We have resources. Why don't we use our resources? Those are, I think even our education system are created as not to think about solutions. Our education system have been designed, all of us, to think about aid, to think about helping instead of thinking about how we can improve, how we can find solutions, how we can change uh, and um, make money, of course, uh, be creative. I think it is possible. So my dear Kings and Queens, those are just my opinions from what I heard from President Pokagam, but I wish to hear more from you. How can we improve uh, our education uh, systems? How can we create a good environment for our young to be employed and of course, we don't need our young men to be employed. We want them to create their own jobs. If you look what we have here in the continent of Africa, there's no need for our young men and women to struggle to find jobs. We have uranium, we have minerals. Why don't we create a good environment for our young men and women to become uh, creators of jobs or to, to add value to our sources? It is possible. As I said, if we can work together, 
it doesn't make sense that the whole continent, young men and women cannot work together, cannot uh, add value to the uranium, cannot add value to gold, cannot add value to iron ore. It doesn't make sense that only Chinese can do so, only European can do so, only maybe Americans can do so. But when it comes to Africans, we can't do anything. It doesn't make sense that we Africans, we cannot uh, process our minerals. And good news is that uh, Burkina Faso now is processing their own gold. Um, also, we have seen some other countries starting to process their own minerals. So we need to process our own minerals to add value. Not only minerals, even agricultural products, uh, marine product. We need to see how we can utilize and add values to those uh, products and resources so that we can create jobs to our young men and women. So, kings and queens, as I said, those are just my opinions. And this is a platform always where we come together as the people of Africa in the diaspora and those who are on the continent to share our thoughts uh, on how we can solve our challenges, how we can find the best solutions uh, on the challenges facing our mother continent, Africa. So, uh, with those few words, let me say thank you. Have a nice time. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.